Where are we? I don't know. What was that noise? I I'm scared. Greetings, mortals! I am Obfuscate, and welcome to the Aso Labyrinth! Gosh, you're... big. Why did you bring us here? That seems kinda stupid. And we already had a big obnoxious guy in our lives, why do we need a second one? Hey! I'm talking about our boss, creature A. Oh. Well, as we all know from TV tropes, reptiles are abhorrent! And you guys aren't abhorrent enough! In order to make it out of the labyrinth, you must make it to the end and defeat the final boss! Me! Hopefully, by that time, you will be abhorrent! Well, there goes my plans for tonight. It's a shame, too. I was gonna watch Jeopardy and eat a TV dinner. <laughs> Well, here's your first trial. Slimes! They can only be damaged with swords! Okay, none of us have an- Hey, look what I found! Sorry, there's only one, and it's made of cheap plastic. I also found some potions, though. <laughs> well then, you're going to be the first one to partake in a battle, little lizard. Slimes, attack! Not me this time. Hey everyone, it's been a while. So this series is basically an excuse for me to revisit Esselings that I have already looked at in older videos. It's not like I have much of a choice though, because that obfuscate monster has tricked me into giving him my soul. Heh <laughs> I made a piece of software that had a line that said, Obfuscate will steal your soul in the license agreement. So if you're listening to this, never read the license agreement. But anyway, I will now be raiding a simple RPG game where Idex battles the two slimes from the sketch at the beginning of the video. And I will be raiding this game in brain f This game will work as follows. Idex will be able to attack one of the slimes or drink a potion. After performing that action, any slimes that are still alive will attack Idex. This cycle will repeat until one of the side's HP is reduced to zero. After that happens, the game will print who won the battle. Anyway, like said in the title and also previously in the video, this game will be programmed in BrainFuck. And if you don't know how that works, you can learn about it from the older video I made, the Esolang Wiki, or by some other video by someone that explained it better than I did. Because I'm pretty sure people explained it better than I did. So, first things first, we need to put the HP of the player, the HP of the slimes, and the amount of potions Idex has into memory. In brain f this can be done very simply by moving to a cell, adding as many points as we want, going to another cell, putting in the next value, and so on. In this code, the player will have 8 HP represented by these 8 pluses, the slimes will have 4 HP each, and Idex will be carrying 2 potions. Yo, turtle loser! Why are the potions in there twice? That's inefficient! FIX IT NOW! Yes, it's in there twice, and it's necessary, you big doofus! Oh, and before starting the game loop, I went back a few cells, subtracted one, and then went back. This sets one of the cells to 255. Since brain f stores numbers as values from 0 to 255, subtracting 1 from 0 causes it to loop back around to 255. This cell here is what I call the anchor cell, and it will be important later. And before I continue, I would like to say that this concept for an anchor cell is not my idea. I learned it from the video AI in Brain f by Mitzella. Anyway, I used a few techniques from his video in my own programs. Mitzella used this snippet of code to get to a cell that he did know the location of from a cell he didn't know the location of. It keeps moving the pointer left until it finds a cell with the value of 255. For more information on this structure, watch his video. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it here. After the anchor cell is the game loop cell. It starts at 1, and the pointer checks it at the beginning of each run through the game loop. When the game is over, this will be switched to 0, stopping the loop. If the game is continuing to take another turn, this will be some value other than 0, but it doesn't matter what the value actually is. So now, finally, after all that setup, the game begins the loop, and takes input from the player as a letter. A will attack slime A, B will attack slime B, and C will use a potion. Yes, I know the word potion doesn't have a C in it, but it was a convenient letter due to being after B. After the player types a letter, the game subtracts 64 from it. The letters A, B, and C have the ASCII values of 65, 66, and 67 respectively, so subtracting 64 changes them to 1, 2, and 3. 
Now aren't those numbers convenient? I think they are. What follows is something else that I shamelessly stole from that other video. I mean, borrowed from that other video. Thanks, Mr. Krabs. This bit of code will move the pointer based on what is in the starting cell. It takes advantage of the fact that, if the current cell is zero, a loop will be skipped. So, if the value under the pointer is a 1, this part will be run. If it's a 2, this part will be run. And if it's a 3, this part will be run. As you can see, it jumps forward more spaces if the number happens to be higher. So now the pointer is on either one of the slime's HP values, or it's on the amount of potions we have. Now, how does the game go about knowing if it's a potion or if it's a slime? Well, remember the complaint from Obfuscate that the potion value was there twice? That is actually used to check if the cell is a potion or not. If the next cell contains a value that is not zero, it must be a potion, since the slime's HPs both have zeros after them, and the amount of potions is followed by a non-zero number, which in this case is the amount of potions a second time. So if the next cell's value is not zero, both copies of the potion value are decremented by one, and IDEX's HP gets increased by three. The pointer then makes sure to end on a cell containing a zero to end the loop. The line following that runs if the player chose to attack an enemy instead of using a potion. It just removes 1 HP from the enemy by subtracting 1, and then moves the pointer to a 0. And since it's checking for a non-zero number to begin with, it will not run if the player has already used a potion. Because if it didn't, that would be bad. But after the player's turn ends, the pointer returns to the anchor to begin the enemy's turn. So at this point, the player has already attacked, and now it's the enemy's turn. The next few lines check Slime A's HP, and if it's not zero, it will subtract one from IDEX's HP and go to the anchor. And then it does the same for Slime B as well. So now both sides have taken their turn. Now what? Well, if we leave this as is, the game will run forever and ever, even after IDEX and the Slimes are dead. So we need to have the cell that the game loop ends on be zero if the game is over, and something other than zero if the game is not over. So, how do we do this? Well, if Slime A has an HP value of not zero, one will be added to the loop cell. It then does the same thing with Slime B. Lastly, if the player has an HP of zero, it will set the loop cell to zero automatically. At least, that's what I think it does. I wrote this code a month ago and I have no clue what I was thinking about with this, but all I know is that it works. So, hooray for that. But anyway, the code outside of the loop happens when the game ends. The pointer moves to the player's HP cell. If that cell is not zero, it prints a win message. And that is the game's base logic. Hopefully that at least made some sense. Yeah, it's called brain f for a reason. Cool! Now let me try this game! Or else! Okay then. This game is dumb! It does not display anything! UNPLAYABLE! Of course the game doesn't display any text. We never told the game to display any text. This is basically the equivalent of playing Super Mario Bros, but not having a TV. So, text needs to be added, and to make a long story short, there is a lot of text. So it's a good thing that the IDE I was using for brain f came with a text generator. Generating text instead of writing it yourself?! That's lame! YOU'RE LAME! Hey, you wanna see a magic trick? Anyway, to make a long story short, adding text turns the game's code from this... ...to this. Yeah, more than half the game's code is text now. And I'm not going to go into detail about this, because it's unnecessary. SHOW GIMME PROGRAM! <laughs> hey, you wanna see a magic trick? Why didn't that work? You're gonna need to try harder than that to get rid of me, mortal! Dang it. Where did that obfuscate loser go? I don't know. I honestly prefer not having him around. Who doesn't? I'm right here, you disrespectful munchkins! Now slimes, ATTACK! You already said that! Turn one! IDEX ATTACKS! Slime A and Slime B ATTACKS!
attack for one damage each. The narration will now end because it's lame and stupid and you have eyes, viewers. Oh wait, there may be blind people watching. Meh. I wonder if this will help. Idex uses a potion! I thought you weren't going to narrate. I can change my mind, creature. Opinions can change! Idex has killed the slimes! Idex wins! Good job, Idex! <laughs> that was surprisingly easy. Look, they dropped loot! It's a creaturey stick! Yeah! And I get a can of regenerating hot tomato soup. Why do I always get the lame stuff? Well, 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 you may have gotten past the first challenge, but there are many more, you tiny, insignificant, minuscule losers! <laughs> well, I may be tiny and insignificant, but you know what I like doing? Having a single quarter-pounder hamburger that completely satiates my appetite for a reasonable price! Gee, I'm so glad I'm this size and not so big to the point where I need to eat either one giant hamburger or hundreds of regular hamburgers. That would make my life so much more miserable and expensive. Silence, crocodile! It's caiman, not crocodile. Never make that mistake again. Now, audience, it's your turn to decide the fate of those three. Behind me are three doors, each one having a different Esserlang. Use the card to vote for the next episode. Voting will end one week after the video goes live. Vote carefully, or else. Or else what? OR ELSE!